Hi everybody, today is February 16th, 2013. I saw this article and I thought, oh sweet Jesus. Bear bombers over Guam. Two Russian nuclear armed bombers circled the western Pacific island of Guam this week in the latest sign of Moscow's growing strategic avertedness towards the United States. The Russian Tu-95 Bear H strategic bombers were equipped with nuclear-tipped cruise missiles and they were followed by U.S. jets as they circumvented Guam on February 12th, local time, hours before Barack Obama's State of the Union address. Maybe that's why during his speech he wasn't looking at anybody or even pretending to look at people. He was too busy listening to his earpiece on the latest information about these bombers. And he just stood there so calm and collective. Air Force Captain Kim Bender, a spokeswoman for the Pacific Air Force in Hawaii, confirmed the incident in the Washington Free Beacon and said Air Force F-15 jets based on Anderson Air Force Base, Guam, scrambled and responded to the aircraft. The Tu-95s were intercepted and left the area in the northbound direction. Um, what could they do? Just follow them and watch them drop bombs? Possibly nuclear weapons? Shoot them down and still have a nuclear weapon go off in the air if they're detonated? I guess they'd have to be detonated first. But if they had weapons locked on, you can be sure that these commanders of these aircrafts probably had them armed. No further action occurred, she said. Bender said no other details would be released for operational security reasons. I bet you this has got to do with what's going on there in China with Japan. You know, I was watching a documentary, Oliver Stone's um, Untold History of the United States, during Nixon's year as president. He actually had launched 12 different times planes that were loaded with nuclear weapons. 12 times during Nixon's four years as president, we could have been at a nuclear war at any time and never known the difference. So then you got this supposed meteorite that hit Russia. I bet you they were really wondering what was going on and I wouldn't be surprised if they scrambled their jets. And this explains why they were doing tests for radiation. The bomber incident was considered highly unusual. Russian strategic bombers are not known to have conducted such operations in the past into the South Pacific from bomber bases in the Russian Far East, which is thousands of miles away and over water. John Bolton, former U.N. ambassador to the former State Department International Security Undersecretary, said the Russian bomber flights appeared to be part of an increasingly threatening strategic posture in response to Obama's admission of anti-nuclear policies. Every day brings new evidence that Obama's ideology obsession with dismantling our nuclear deterrent is dangerous, Bolton said. Our national security is in danger of slipping off the national agenda even as the threats grow. No, something else is going on that the Russians feel threatened or one of their allies feels threatened. With the news being censored, it makes you wonder what the Russians are thinking. Defense officials said the bombers tracked over Guam were likely equipped with six KH-55 or KH-55 SM cruise missiles that can hit targets up to 1,800 miles away with either high explosive warheads or a 200 kiloton nuclear warhead. They were serious. Basically this was an act of war. Just like during the Cuban crisis when we put up our blockade that was an act of war. The F-15s that intercepted the bombers were based in Kadena Air Force Base Japan. See that Japan? And were deployed to Guam for the ongoing annual exercise, Gohan's Shield 2013. Two US B-2 strategic bombers were deployed to Guam in late January, and last fall, advanced F-22 fighter bombers were temporarily stationed on the island. Three nuclear-powered attack submarines and the Global Hawk long-range drone are also based in Guam. About 200 Marines are currently training on the island. Earlier news reports stated, the Japanese and Australian military jets joined U.S. jets in the Guam exercise. Guam is one of the key strategic U.S. military bases under the Obama administration's new pivot to Asia policy. As a result, it is a target of China and North Korea. Both have missiles capable of hitting the island located about 1,700 miles east of the Philippines in the Mariana Island chain. This week's bomber flights are a sign that the Russians are targeting the island as well, one defense official said. It probably was a show of force, you know, um, flexing of muscles about a possible preemptive strike against the United States. Guam also plays a key role in the Pentagon's semi-secret strategy called the Air-Sea Battle Concept, designed to counter 
what the Pentagon calls China's anti-access and area denial weapons, precision guided missiles, submarines, anti-satellite weapons, and other special warfighting capabilities designed to prevent the U.S. military from defending allies or keeping sea lanes open in the region. Defense officials disclosed the incident in the Free Beacon and said the Russian bomber flight appeared to be a strategic message from Moscow timed to the President's State of the Union address. They were sending a message to Washington during the State of the Union speech, one official said. The bomber flights also coincided with growing tensions between China and Japan over the Seneku Islands. A Chinese warship recently increased tensions between Beijing and Tokyo by using targeting radar against a Japanese warship. The U.S. military has said it would defend Japan in any military confrontation with China over the Senecus. Now, don't forget, Obama said he's going to lead the world against the fight against North Korea and their development of nuclear weapons. The bomber flights appeared to signal Russian support for China in the dispute. And there's been talk, I've reported this too, that China has had huge military movements along its coast. Meanwhile, Obama on Wednesday telephoned Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to reiterate U.S. nuclear assurance to its ally following the North Korea's third detonation of an underground nuclear device. A White House statement said that the President told Abe, who visits Washington next week, that the United States remains steadfast in its defense commitments to Japan, including the extended deterrence offered by the U.S. nuclear umbrella. It shows that the Russians, like the Chinese, are not just going to sit idly by and watch the United States pivot or rebalance its forces towards Asia, said former State Department security official Mark Groombridge. They're currently having supposed war games there in the uh, seas around Japan and China called Cobra Gold, where over 17,000 military forces are participating along with seven countries. There's also 110 countries observing this. One could argue that Russians were poking a bit of fun at the Obama administration seeing how they flew these long-range bombers close to Guam on the same day as the State of the Union address, he said. But the broader implications are more profound, said Groombridge, now with the private strategic intelligence firm Lignet, L-I-G-N-E-T. The Russians are clearly sending a signal that they consider the Pacific an area of vital national strategic interest and that they still have at least some power projecting capabilities to counterbalance against any possible increase in U.S. military assets in the region. Airspace violations by Russian Su-27 jets triggered intercepts by Japanese fighters near Japan's Hokkaido Island last week. I also reported on that. The February 7th incident prompt protests from Tokyo and took place near disputed territory claimed by both countries since the end of World War II. And it's all because of rare earth minerals that were discovered there back in 2011. It wasn't really widely reported because they had the meltdown of the Japanese Fukushima nuclear power plants that was highlighting the news back then. But it's almost pure rare earth minerals that's being spewed from a volcano vent there on one of the islands. Russia sent military troops and equipment to the island when this happened. The Russian air incursion around Guam was the third threatening strategic bomber incident since June. On July 4th, two Bear H operated at the closest point to the United States that a Russian bomber has flown since the Soviet Union routinely conducts such flights. They're not mentioning the nuclear submarine that was in the Gulf of Mexico for a month and never discovered until after it left. And that was last year. The July bomber flights near California followed an early incident in June when two Bear H's ran up against the air defense zone near Alaska as part of a large-scale strategic exercise that Moscow said involved similar attacks on U.S. missile defense bases. The Pentagon operates missile defense bases in Alaska and California. Those flights triggered the scrambling of the U.S. and Canadian interceptor jets as well. The bomber flights near Alaska violated a provision of the 2010 New START arms treaty that requires advanced notification of exercises involving strategic nuclear bombers. Well, Russia said that they are dropping out of the New START treaty and all their actions, it sure seems like they mean it. Military spokesmen sought to play down the June and July incidents as non-threatening, apparently reflecting the Obama administration conciliatory reset policy towards Russia that seeks better relations by tapping down criticism of Moscow. 
despite growing anti-U.S. sentiments and policies from the regime of the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Joint Chiefs Chairman General Martin Dempsey questioned his Russian counterpart, General Nikolai Markov, during a meeting at the Pentagon July 12th. The latest Russian nuclear saber rattling through bomber flights comes as the Obama administration is planning a new round of strategic arms reduction talks with Russia. State Department arms official Rose Gautamaler was recently in Moscow for arms discussions. What the Russians are probably saying is that the Americans don't ever keep their word. The Iranians are saying the same thing. The president was expected to announce plans to cut U.S. nuclear forces by an additional one-third in a new round of arms reduction efforts with Moscow. Don't forget March 1st, the Pentagon is losing 7% of its funds. And I said how the military is not going to put up with that. They're going to create a war somewhere. However, the president did not announce the plans and said only during his State of the Union speech that he plans further arm cuts. Building Guam as a strategic hub has played a critical role in balancing U.S. security interests. In responding to and cooperating with China as well as in shaping China's perception and conduct, wrote Government Accountability Office analysis Shirley A. Can in a September 2012 report. Since 2000, the U.S. military has been building up forward deployed forces on the westernmost U.S. territory of Guam to increase U.S. presence, deterrence, and power projection for potential responses to crises and disasters, counterterrorism, and contingencies in support of South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Taiwan, and elsewhere in Asia. So, you guys, if you don't have that extra can of beans in your cupboard, you really should have it. Might as well have something in your survival bug out bags that you can trade with. Money in the bank you can't trade with. And like they say, you can't take it with you. You can't eat gold and you can't eat silver. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep everyone up to date. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.